Uh, Howard, can we well, let people Well, welcome know? everybody to CRE Radio and TV. I'm going to cut you off, Linda. Welcome everybody <laughs> to see it. We're recording, Linda. Welcome to CRE Radio and TV. And today we're going to be talking about the survey that uh, the Broker List and Build Out did. And I have on the show so that you can ask questions. You can ask questions on the live chat on the right-hand side, or you can actually hop on if you're on Blab and sit in the seat and be seen and heard and ask questions and all of that, which is really, really cool. But before we do that, we are going to first give our station identification. Wow. Yeah. So wow. cool. Did everybody hear that? Just like TV. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I'll just I run commercials it. now because I'm having so much fun. So I have <laughs> Linda Day Harrison from the broker list Hello. and Eva. And you know Yay. how I remember that? Because I said forever. There you go. And that is such a New York <laughs> statement because forever in New York, we just say forever. 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 Exactly. <laughs> forever. Ever. We're doing this forever with Build Out. Uh-huh. And why don't you, Linda, why don't you uh, take just about 30 seconds to describe what TBL is or the broker list, and then we'll go to Eva and ask her what build out is. Well, the broker list is a community of verified commercial real estate brokers, and we have a blog and we do tons of social media stuff, and we just help everybody meet each other and share their content. That's what we're about. Yeah, Linda's one of my favorite people, by the way. You're so sweet, okay. Howard. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, guys. She's You're so nice. And Eva, see, I'm not even hesitating now. I've got this down. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Eva Baskin. And yes. Eva, uh, now, where are you from? What's your heritage? Uh, I'm Polish. Polish. So my name is E-W-A, but the W is pronounced like a V. So it's uh, Eva. See, I thought it was German. Uh, and yeah. I thought it was Eva. Yeah, right, I'm going, right. oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a W because I know my grandparents would have pronounced it as a, as a uh, V. And, right. Uh, and, and, uh, oh, I almost uh, missed. Uh, would you tell us build out is? Absolutely. So build out is a marketing software for commercial real estate brokerages. So we help automate the marketing uh, material creation process. And then we also streamline the whole property listing process, meaning we can syndicate to all the listing sites. We could push all of your property listings to the broker list or other listing sites, um, as well as we create property websites and all the documents needed for all. And all marketing Outstanding. Now, today we are going to be talking about their survey that they did. They collaborated uh, on a survey that they've uh, titled the DNA of CRE. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up on the screen. See, you are, you're all, everybody here who's watching this, you are um, guinea pigs because this yeah. is a new thing with Blab where we can I can run videos and commercials and share my screen. And one of the things that we're <clears throat> going to be talking about and we're going to share here is the um not an infomercial it's uh what do, what do you call this infographic uh, infographic thank you very much yeah i'm getting a little old so maybe i'm losing a bit but we have an in- infographic here which we're going to talk about and what we're what we're going to uh well who would like to go first maybe i'll start with uh no linda's shaking her head I'll she's go going no <laughs> I don't Eva, care. Why don't you don't describe care. what it is that you intended to accomplish by this uh, survey? Absolutely. So the DNA of CRE is just that. We really aimed to try to understand the makeup of the commercial real estate um, industry. 
So we went on a mission to survey brokers in brokerages and to really figure out how do they spend their day? What do they care about? What tools do they usually use? And really to try to dig deep into what our industry is comprised of. So we did a survey mostly through social media and email marketing, and we launched it for about a month, a couple of weeks. Um, and then we compiled all the results and created this infographic here. Um, and Linda did share a post on the on the right side where the live chat is. There was an article that was published by the RE Journals, Real Estate Journals, uh, that did a piece about the results. So you could read that um, as well as just listen in to what we have to say today. Well, why don't we dig a little bit into some of the details? Let's get uh, right into it. Here it says seller reps, 28%. What was the question that you asked? And was there anything here that surprised you or you felt was significant? Uh, Linda, why don't you answer that? The question was, what um, role do you spend the most time in? So our audience is commercial real estate brokers, and it is a real common question we get from people all the time asking us what roles are most brokers in or what do they do, you know, that kind of a thing, because there's a lot of misconception on commercial real estate in general. I think that it is extremely specialized, and this kind of proves that point. Um, according to our survey, 28%, only 28% are seller reps. So when you think about that, seller reps are people that have listings. So 28% in 2015 spent most of their time doing mm -hmm. listings. So the, all the rest of the uh, respondents, almost half of um, or that same figure was uh, tenant, um, rep. mm -hmm. tenant reps. So tenant reps are the people that represent tenants going to the landlords in, in leasing, typically. That was a, a split. That was an even split. That was pretty interesting. In other words, when you think about the industry, and then it, it goes down from there. I don't want to read all the different breakdowns, but you know, basically it was almost e even head to head, seller rep and tenant rep. Well, does this now, was this an either or, or were you able to determine whether or not uh, the brokers work both sides of the deal? Uh, not necessarily at the same time, but I would imagine, and this is my experience, that a listing agent, or as you refer to it as a seller rep, a lot of times they put up signs in front of the buildings so that they can capture uh, people looking for space. As a matter of fact, when I was a broker, I would walk buildings in Manhattan that were 50, 60 stories tall saying, I've got a tenant who's looking for additional space. And, the, you know, do you have any additional space to sublet? And they would call me back and they would say, yeah, you know, yeah, I got some additional space to sublet. And then I'd start looking for <laughs> the sublessee. So, you know, we work both sides of the deal. I, you, I mean, you want as much business as you can. So were you able to tell that from the uh, survey? Well, the point of the survey, and, and, I, and I want to focus on this, it's really important, was we were trying to understand the year 2015 in the industry. So the question was, what role do you spend the most time in in 2015? Now that answers your question. What hat were you wearing? The majority so for two, th right? So for 2015, the majority, uh, the biggest number was 28% were listing properties. So that's what I think is interesting. Now, as far as what they do, I think you're right, Howard. I mean, if you want, if you're a commercial real estate broker and you put put a sign on a property, that's because you have the listing. Now, I understand what you're saying when you're hoping to get more business from that sign, but that's not why you put the sign up. You put the sign up because you're an agent for that owner selling that or le selling or leasing that property primarily. No, that, that's would you get you lucky? Would you get, well, would you get lucky and have a, a tenant walk in without a broker? Maybe, but I mean, I don't think that's no, the reason. I, I, guess I disagree with you. I, most of the well, brokers that I, I know, it's in it's a marketing piece for themselves and they'll leave that, that they'll leave that sign up if they can whether there's space in the building or not and while i'm assuming that there are brokers who are exclusively listing agents 
or brokers who are putting that sign up because they're trying to market space within that building. And that is their primary purpose. I mean, you'd have to, in essence, if you do a survey again, I, I, I would be curious. And I know that you have a list of questions that you want to ask on future surveys, but I would be really curious to see how many people are exclusively tenant reps, how many people are exclusively uh, landlord reps or seller reps, and how many people share and what percentage. See, this, you just, you don't really know that. But I think, this, True, I think that right. it's important. And as I said, from my experience, it's probably more of a marketing piece uh, that uh, listing agents, you know, I, I want as much as a listing agent, I want as much signs up as possible so that I get name recognition. It's branding for me. It's branding for the brokerage and it's branding sure. for me personally. So I don't know. Uh, be that as it may. I, I'd love to hear from brokers if anyone's listening on Howard's point. I, I just know that I, when I talk to tenant reps, that's all they do is tenant representation. My husband was a, my husband was a tenant rep broker. He, he never was, never took listings. I mean, he just never did. I mean, he did what, his one thing and that was it. So, I mean, I think if you manage and lease a property and you put a sign up, that is your, your calling card for that property. And it's common that you would have a sign up, but I don't know of a lot of landlords that you put a sign up to hope to get business if they don't have space available. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, well, I'm not from that. Different. I'm from a major metropolitan market and big high rises. So, you know, we wouldn't put a sign up if we didn't have. Uh, no, you space. wouldn't put up a sign unless if you didn't have vacant space. But you would put up the sign if you had vacant space and you just might not take it down as quickly. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I guess it's a good question well, to ask I mean, For some people, that's going to be an ethical issue. And, for, uh, yeah, and, I, and particularly yeah. for people who are exclusively tenant reps. Right. Because there, right. uh, there's a larger group of those people who, you know, hold out to the rest of the world that there's an ethical issue, a conflict of interest right. issue. I, th I think I think what you're bringing up a good point, Eva, help me on this. Maybe we're overlooking something because remember Barbie Reuter had suggested we ask yeah. about gender. She said, Linda, when you do the survey next time, ask about gender. That ties into what yeah. you're saying, uh -huh. Howard. So maybe... Our snapshot here was 2015. I don't even want to utter these words. Maybe we tackle a survey that is not based on a year of activity, but based on a real profile of the people rather than just the, the 2015 uh, market. Yeah, which is this I can't was. tell you what you should do, but, you know, it's live and learn. You do something sure. and you learn from it and you go, hey, you we could have asked right. these other questions. If anybody right now, we're only we can only use four windows, so to speak. We're using our fourth to share my screen. So at, at least for the time, I, I'm noticing some people, including Ryan Dennis, who's on. Uh, if you'd like to get on, we'll give you the opportunity in a little while. Uh, uh, and if you have any questions. On the live chat, on the right-hand side of your screen, what you should do is um, uh, type in forward slash space Q, and then uh, you ask your question or get, give your comment, or you can just give your comment, and I'll notice it, and I'll read it into the record. Oh, I sound so much like a lawyer. <laughs> and, and then also, by the way, uh, you can direct your question to someone uh, in particular, so if you have a question for Linda or Eva, what you can do is you can uh, first type in uh, the ampersand and then their uh, Twitter handle. And th that way you get to ask your question or your comment directly to them. And, and, and it would be the same for me. So uh, in about uh, we're actually going to take a short break. And we're going to run a very short commercial. Again, you people who are watching and listening are guinea pigs because we're adding all this. 
new stuff. So if I get a little carried away because I'm excited. <laughs> we I only did one question, Howard. <laughs> yeah, Howard, oh, we haven't even gotten to the I know, we're going to do it pretty quickly. So uh, <laughs> don't, what, what, why don't we just hold on? Linda, you're not going to complain about this because this is your commercial. There you go. No, but I, I don't need a commercial. <laughs> oh, that's true. I'm not sure that you really do. So why don't we take a break for the people who are our supporters? This show is brought to you by The Broker List, the CRE community's first free online platform for finding brokers, deals, services, and vendors. And Quantum Listing is the new mobile crowdsourced real estate listing app for commercial real estate agents, owners, and tenants. I yeah, hope I hope watching. you're watching because we're unable to record this with um, that material in there. All right, so let's uh, okay. go back and, and let's leave a seat open. So if anybody wants yeah. to join in, just um, click on the open seat. And you can do so. So I'm going to look at it. The next, uh, the next thing on the list here is retail office is 26 percent. Uh, Eva, why don't? Uh, who did I ask the first question to? Was it Eva or Linda? I'll take this one. Okay. Yeah. Take so, one. What was the question? What did you come up with, and and what what may have surprised you? Absolutely. So similar to the first question, which is which role did you spend the most time in? Um, we again tried to take a snapshot snapshot of uh, you know your 2015 year, and we asked which property type uh, did you sell or lease the most of in 2015. And there was a tie with retail being 26 and office space being 26. So that wasn't very surprising. Um, I think Linda, you could chime in also. I think we were. Um, you know, not very surprised. Like it makes sense. It also makes sense in terms of the economy where people are hiring more, uh, you know, just companies are hiring more, they're leasing more space, retail is booming. So I think spending a lot of time selling and leasing those spaces made sense as a majority answer. Well, what, what, what was yeah. the other 48%? Absolutely. So, I know it was Ted Cruz and Kasich. <laughs> And everyone else, right? <laughs> That's right. The other 15 other candidates. Right. Uh, yeah. What were the uh, the other 48%? So we had industrial, 24%, multifamily, 11 land, 7 and then special purpose, hospitality, student housing, medical, single tenant net lease all got 1% or 2%. It's a, a little crystal ball here, Linda. Do, do you mm -hmm. have any thoughts as to whether or not, and if anybody else has a comment on this, please uh, let us know. you have any thoughts on if this is going to change for 2016? Oof. Well, I was really surprised that uh -huh. office was that neck and neck. Yeah, I was, I was surprised office was up there because industrial was only two points under. It was 24% industrial. 26 uh, retail and 26 office. It was a, it was an even, almost even split between those three, but I was surprised office was that high. I would, my crystal ball would say um, more than likely uh, with all the things you're hearing about in the media, about retail, a lot of stores closing, uh, maybe retail is going to, going to go down. And I think industrial might go up. So that would be my prediction. We might go up a little bit too. Just, just from what you hear. Yeah, I think multifamily is, I think multifamily is going to be very healthy. Mm -hmm. if, if you own multifamily, it's going to be a nice three to five years. Uh, I think that the sale transactions are going to slow down in multifamily. I think that we're getting near the top of the price range in most markets and you can give or take that in retail it, there may be and this is for consideration uh a lot of the closings are big big uh big box stores here yeah well either big box so, big yeah walls. yeah i mean these are really big things so it it's possible that we may not see the drop off because they may be looking for ways to split 
some of these big boxes. So the, the leasing transactions may increase because they're, they're going to have to do something about those. And uh, it may, in, in, it may create multiple transactions where a Macy's location, I mean, if there was a Macy's location, not, there were no sell or lease transactions for the longest time. Now, all of a sudden, there will be. I was just reading a blog post by Hightower saying how, now this isn't retail, but it is office, how all of these suburban huge campuses like an Abbott Laboratories used to be in the suburbs and now they're all migrating to the cities. And I know that happened in Chicago. I have friends that work at Kraft, Discover Card. Everyone is moving from the suburbs into Chicago. And now there's all this, this space in the suburbs all these hundreds of thousands of square feet that are now vacant and they don't know what to do with it. And they're trying to push it into a multifamily, trying to make it complexes, but yet, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations around it. So right now a lot of these buildings are, are, are vacant. So it's, a, it's definitely a problem with all these closures. Yeah. Coy Davidson just wrote a blog post uh, that talks about the five greatest myths in real estate. And, and one of the things that he was mentioning is that, you know, the suburban office market, as an example, is, you know, it's not dying. And not everybody's going to office concept. And and the, the, the press, so to speak, of the media would make it believe that every everybody's going into the urban core. And the urban cores are generally doing well. I mean, I wish that I could. The problem is this. I wish that I could afford to live in an urban core. And, uh, you know, because I'm getting older, I don't want to have a car and I'd like to be able to get around. But there aren't a lot of urban cores that allow for good transportation, not just walkability, but good public transportation, and that are also affordable. So I, I wouldn't get so caught up with, um, you know, the suburbs hurting that that much and and maybe some of the suburban malls that are not doing that well, are going to uh, uh, disappear. We have, if I can find my cur cursor, a person calling in. So why don't we see? Yay. About... I, you guys, I want to make note of his comment. Oh, I didn't see it. Ava for okay. a survey. Yeah. You know how we talked about profiles of people? I think it'd be good to know if people are urban or suburban brokers. Okay. That yeah. would be another good one, too. And... You know, do they work in a big metropolitan area? Okay, let's go on to the next question. And I am going okay. to share the screen again. So okay. uh, let's bring that baby up. Okay, and here we are. All right, so on the next uh, question is 31% United States and South. What, what does that mean? And what was the question and what did you mean by that, uh, Linda? The question was, where did most of your business come from? And again, I, I keep reiterating that the survey was about their business in 2015. And we wanted to know not where they were, but where did the business come from? So 31% said the South. And then from that point, it went to 24% uh, Midwest and 24% West. So it was pretty, pretty evenly split between South, Midwest, and West. Uh, Northeast was a smaller percentage, which makes sense. It is a smaller area, 13%. Then national business was 4%. Canada was 3 And then international was uh, 1%. So, it, you know, basically it's telling us where the business came from. And it makes sense. South is the biggest chunk of land. Well, th this begs a question, doesn't it? Uh, and uh, we're going to get to your question in a second, Ryan. This begs a question is, do you know who... You asked. I mean, is it 31% of the people that you asked were from the South? In which case, yeah, that makes that makes kind of sense because most people work within a geographic limited area. So, uh, you know, it, it, it seems to me that in order to understand that answer or that number, you need to know who the people were and where they were from. It would be interesting right. to see if, well, yeah. you know, only 25% of the brokers 
that responded are from the South, but 31% of the business was from the South. Right. That might be telling to me. Absolutely. And that's something that we talked about for future questions. We also, this being the first survey, we tried very hard to limit the amount of questions asked. We sure. really tried to um, be as short and concise and get as many overarching themes and insights as we can into a very small subset of questions. So there was a few questions at the end that were optional that you could give a little bit more information about yourself. I mean, our, our next question here is about your commissions. So we tried to keep this anonymous so that no one, you know, that people do give truthful answers. Um, but yeah, so so absolutely in the future, I think we'll we'll try to make maybe a two part survey or or something to, to expand on these insights. Well, I would think yeah. that if you ask too many questions, people aren't going to participate. Right, which is why we right. didn't want right. to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we were yeah. one page. And we, and we know they're busy. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. busy. Well, it, and nobody likes surveys. Yeah, no, I, they don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to take just a short break. This show is brought to you by the broker list the cre community's first free online platform for finding brokers deals services and vendors and quantum listing is the new mobile crowdsource real estate listing app for commercial real estate agents owners and tenants okay so um if you want to ask um if ryan you want to hop on or Come on, Ryan. You can I, I hop on and, and participate in the conversation. Love to have Our people join. It's better when you could just talk about them instead of just watching them. <laughs> I like that better too. Well, we can't talk behind their backs because it's online. I wanted to meet Ryan. I wish he'd get on, but he's being a chicken. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about uh, one of these other questions. Yeah, maybe we could go down. Uh, here we go. Percentage of deals you co-broker, it says 22% between 30 and 50%. I'm not sure I understand yeah. that response. Eva, you do that one, I'll do the next one. No, no, she I likes this, this one. So she likes, she likes this yeah. one. <laughs> Wanted to understand, obviously, how many deals you co-brokered. And the, the answer choices were pick one. It was less than 10% of your deals were co-brokered between 10 and 30%, 30 to 50%, 50 to 70, 70 to 90, and over 90. And the majority of the answers said that between 30 and 50% of their deals were co-brokered. Um, I also like tallied some of these um, answers up and I think, where was my co-broker? So, okay, so if you add some of these answers up, 58% said that they co-brokered less than 50% of their deals. So it was just, it was, it was interesting. What I actually thought was, oh, we have a friend, hi. <laughs> I'm not sure I understood that. How are you? I'm following Because I'm listening, I'm going, I, was, I wasn't even looking at you. I was looking at the infographic trying to like make you with all these Oh, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, <laughs> what you see is what you get. Absolutely. 22% people said that they co-brokered about 50% of their deals. That oh, okay. That's, That's a little better. What was interesting, though, was that 13% said that they co-brokered more than 90% of their deals. So almost all of their deals were co-brokered with another broker. So that's interesting because you're sharing your commissions, you're you're trying to, you know, share your marketing and, and whatever other things, brokers, words. <laughs> so Ellis, did you understand that? Because I did. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ellis. <laughs> Welcome aboard, like a recording Ellis. studio. This is in USA. Uh, I'm really enjoying the content here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow! What do, what do you do, Ellis? Uh, I am a uh, agent broker investor. Agent broker investor. Oh, awesome. Welcome. Okay. Uh, Wonderful. Glad to see you online. Great. See, Let, uh, Howard. Let's go to the survey because I really yeah, want to see what Ellis thinks of thing. some of these. Others. Ellis, we're going to have to kick you off. Please subscribe to oh, to the shows. I can't. You have to kick them off. Yeah, I have that? to kick someone off. Oh. Should I kick you off? Actually, I could kick my. Yeah, you can kick me off. Kick 
No, no I'm not going to kick no. you. No, you could kick me off. I don't care. Yeah. What I'm saying is I really want – I want I want them to hear these other questions because they're yeah, fascinating. That's, okay. That's um, yeah, let, let's, I had I, I'm going to skip the, less than a 27 percent of the people uh, had. Uh, is that early? that's my favorite question? Okay. That's my Linda, favorite question. Take it away. Don't skip okay, that one. We'll come well, that one. That one's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite, you guys, because I think there's always been. You know, nobody ever knows, well, you know, you're in commercial real estate, you make a ton of money, blah, blah, blah. And so we put that on the on the survey. What was your gross commission income in 2015? And 27% said less than $100,000 a year. Then the next uh, the next question or the, ne the next option was from 100 to 150. That was 23%. So basically, in essence, 50% of our respondents earn, earn less than $150,000 a year. And then the next jump up was 150 to 200,000 a year. That was 16%. And then 300 to a half a mil a year was 12%. Uh, 200 to 300 was 9%. And then uh, 500 to a million was 9% too. And then when you get into the millions, you're down to 3%, one uh, percent was three to 5 million, which you know obviously that's massive. I think the point is 50% of our people earn less than $150,000 a year. And I think that's important for people to realize because I think there's always been a misconception of how much money that they're making and how much money they can spend, especially on technology uh, initiatives and, and marketing. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's our gross commission. Is, is that before or after a split with the brokerage company? Well, we said gross commission income. So to me, I, I would imagine that would be the commission and then their There's, commission. Yeah. I mean, after, after a split. Yes. That take home. Yeah, their commission. Say, yeah. Their, yeah. Your gross commission yeah. income is the question. Oh, okay. All right. But I mean, still, I mean, now, you know, obviously, then you pay your taxes. I mean, there's not much left. I, it, You know, that's not, it depends upon where you are. If you're in, you know, a, a right. an area that is low, uh, you know, uh, low income area, and the costs aren't that expensive, then $100,000 could be a lot of money. If you're living in New York City, it's barely subservient. Yeah. Right, you know, right, you're, right. Hundred thousand dollars wouldn't get you too far. Hundred thousand dollars barely gets you anywhere in Southern California, uh, right? Or Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the, it really depends. But, right. You've got this thing on relationships. It says seventy-one percent. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, what, That's is, so what is that? So the next section is these two questions. If, if can you scroll down a little bit? Um, Howard, you just put yeah, your yeah. factors, put that up there. And that kind of ties into your tools also. Um, so your factors, this is what you, the people we surveyed, care about most. And the question was, what was the biggest stimulus for winning business in 2015? And huge majority, by far landslide, 70% said that it was relationships that they formed even way before personal reputation, which we kind of talked about building up your brand, company brand, again, we talked about brand, 4% um, said data is the biggest stimulus. So it was very interesting. It's it's that, you know, 70, 71% say, said that their biggest reason why they sold and made money in 2015 was because of their relationships, which kind of ties into um your tools a little later when we get into that section around again it's such a big stimulus but they're not using all the tools so we you know we could we could get into that a little bit but also the next question is what was the biggest um challenge in marketing your listings and again a huge portion said that maximizing your exposure was their biggest challenge so you know getting themselves out there making sure people know that they have listings, making sure that the people know that they even exist. And again, if you scroll down to your tools, the answers that they provided in your tools don't support their cares about their business. So not, not, 
or the or their efforts right. their efforts are in the Absolutely. wrong place so only 27 percent said that they use fine list space um technology like loop net coaster catalyst which is absolutely beyond me because they care so much about maximizing their exposure yet they're not using the tool to um to maximize their exposure correctly. how how can you not use those tools it's shocking to me is it because the expense is too much it's it is expensive. probably mm -hmm. the cost wow. but look at look at email marketing howard email marketing 18 percent said that that's a tool they regularly use. Wow, that's scary. That's 18%, 13% say they use a CRM. I bet you it would be totally different if you were talking to residential agents. Agreed. I think I so. Well, I mean, for, to me, uh, and I'm starting to consider Facebook as a tool for commercial agents. And I, I had always poo-pooed that. But I, well, look at relationships. Yes. Look, look at relationships and what you exactly. just said. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, as you well know, I'm going to be going to recon this year. And I didn't make that decision until yesterday. So all of a sudden I have to scramble and um, set up interviews. And the weirdest thing happened is I'm, I'm looking through going, okay, let me see all of the PR people that I had contacted two years ago, which was the last time I had been at recon. And... I get a, a a message on Facebook from John Bessie saying, you know, are you going to recon? Maybe we ought to get together and do something. I don't know if you know who John Bessie is, but he's the CEO of Phillips Edison Arc, you know, which is a big company, yeah. particularly in a big, big retail company and owner. And I'm going, for the last couple of months, I've been thinking, if, if you're going to be on commercial real estate, first of all, a lot of the CEOs and C-level people, the decision makers in commercial real estate are on Facebook. And I'm even seriously considering paid advertising on Facebook. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but I think certainly for residential agents, mm -hmm. it ought to be. But if you can target your properties and target your content to the CEOs of the companies who are going to make the decisions to rent space or buy space or whatever. I think, you know, with a, a one and a half billion people, I think you can find customers and develop relationships on Facebook, not just LinkedIn and Twitter. For me, Facebook is, has been, um, my personal pages, my family, my friends, people from high school, you know, you know, college kids, you know, that kind of reunion kind of people, people you haven't seen in a long time, but it's starting to trickle. I'm just starting to notice what you're noticing. People that no, now know me because of the broker list are finding me and then saying, be my friend. And it's kind of weird. I'm like, like well, yes, maybe, yeah. it's not. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's what I'm talking about. Isn't yeah. related to the broker list. It's it's my personal stuff, but I've I've been friending, I've been doing it. I've been saying, okay, be my friend. And it is interesting, but it's changing for me. It's it's just starting. Well, but but I, everything the broker list is its own separate fan page. You have to keep in mind the kind of person you are and the kind of person I am is that we have professional relationships with people and we become friends. That's where the majority True, right. of my friends are from is right. from my professional relationship. So right. Uh, right. not to name drop another name, uh, I had interviewed Albert Baritz, who's the CEO of McKinley, oh, three or four him. years ago. He's great. And yeah. he and I are connected on Facebook. And, and he is what I call the this social media CEO expert. I mean, he is. He all is. CEOs... Yes. Yes. Who are not yes. technological companies. He gets right. and his whole company. He's unbelievable. Yeah, he's yeah. just such a wonderful guy. And you become friends with these people. And he's perfect. Yeah. And you can do this kind of stuff. What else do we have? We're going a little bit over, but um oh. I would can, I I want to ask one last question about the Facebook ads because sure. 
that is something as a marketer we struggle with. So I have an ad budget and I have my ads on LinkedIn. I have my Google ads. I have my Twitter ads, all of those things. As a company, we're reluctant to get into the Facebook realm because of what Linda just said. That is where I talk about my family. That's where I post pictures of my dog and my baby. And that's where I go to relax and unplug from my day-to-day -day job and things like that. So are we as marketers or as a company that's marketing and targeting you stepping on your toes? Are we, does it annoy you when I'm trying to sell you something on a Facebook ad when it's supposed to be a medium that is personal? Um, so it's something that we struggle with and I, we haven't dabbled in Facebook. We've obviously done social posting on pages and things like that, but not in terms of advertising. We're still sticking with LinkedIn where people log into LinkedIn expecting to learn and have a business mind around them. When they log into Facebook, they're expecting to see social things. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm curious if anyone has any comments on that or, or should we just go for it? Is it kind of well, my, it's all my, coming on. my, yeah, my comment is we're 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 B2B people, okay? We're not B2C people. In other words, we don't do business with consumers. So a lot of the Facebook ads are for regular for all of us. It's like, you know, restaurants right. or you know, or exactly. buy this or buy that. We're different. So what I've been doing with my Facebook page is really working the B2B side. So what happens is when someone likes my Facebook page, when I say me, I mean the broker list. I will like back their company's Facebook page. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and then promote yes. that. In other words, I'm not trying to say, okay, I'm going to go find Joe Smith who works at, um, you know, whatever company it is, Lee, Lee Orange, and, and like his page. I don't do that. I have not gone. But if they like my page, yes. then that opens the door for me to like them. But I'm not seeking them out. And I don't know if, I guess it does make sense. So if you're running Facebook ads, if they're just ads, or are you going into their space? If you know the difference, what I mean, like posting and no, stuff I like was, that. I was just or saying ads. ads. I, yeah, I wouldn't want to go in deep into the realm and actually just run Right, <laughs> that's what I mean. That's yeah, creepy. No. I mean, I just, I just think it's kind of creepy, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Cause it's your family and stuff. It's like, you know, your dog and Let your, me tell all you that how kind of I'm stuff. using it and, and considering using it on Facebook. First, I have a, a, a commercial real estate page and uh, there are some commercial real estate groups. And what I do, I believe in the 80, 20 rule, 80% 80 of your social media marketing should be content and 20% should be advertising. So, uh, Really, what I am considering doing is advertising my content, my videos, my live blabs, uh -huh. because, uh -huh. you know, my videos, etc. So right. I'm throwing out content to people. Well, you try it, Howard. You try it for a month. If it works, uh, good. Yeah. If it doesn't... Well, I think you really have to try it for a longer time because I think that there's just a learning curve to make it optimum. So you have to pretty much make a commitment and go, I'm not likely to be successful in the first three or four months. As long as I'm committed to trying different things, trying to figure out how, how it can work, then I think that's right. the right way of doing it. But if you, if people start watching the videos, that's helpful to me. My business is a little bit different, but then I can go ahead. And when people start who don't know me start following my page, and then learn that I'm also an attorney and that I can negotiate leases mm -hmm. and right. handle litigation, yada, yada, yada. They're right. not so, and if 80% of it is content, then all that they're getting on my advertising other than the content is, okay, Howard's an attorney and he can negotiate. Right, right. And I think that that's a very gentle approach to follow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth the advertising, you know, paid advertising if you do it that right. way. And Mary, Howard, read what Mary, yeah, read what Mary yeah. said, and I hope Mary gets on with us. Jump on, Mary. We'd yeah. love to have Mary you. Mary Ostrander. 
I think I, we're all we're all guinea pigs in here learning yeah. how to use this, and I think it's the coolest tool in the world that Howard's showing us. In marketing for CRE, regardless of B two B focus, it's very important to use Facebook and other platforms to express your business story and culture. Right on. Agreed. I mean, that is so said. Well, I'm going to plagiarize it in the future, Mary. Right. The blog gonna, post is going to write a Facebook yeah. ad about it. <laughs> yeah, Mary, you exactly. are right on. Absolutely. And here comes Ryan Dennis. Ryan. Yay. Hello. All right. All right. Wait a second. All right. Are you right. Hey, Hi, how's it going, Ryan. guys? I love the content. Really do. Awesome. It's great. Good. Oh, good. You're good. so sweet. We're so glad this to have awesome. you. Fantastic. How collaborative. Yeah, so it's great. Absolutely. I'm giving you a bunch oh, of love it. here. My little like yeah, he's, he's already got almost as much love as, as I've gotten. He's and, a superstar. Oh, yes. He's That's a star. I, I had to jump in when I when you guys were talking about Mary's comment because I couldn't agree more. I mean, um, we all have to yeah. kind of give up a little bit a little bit of our personality and our personal profile to be faces. I, I know Howard and Linda is very familiar there. Their faces are just as famous as their logos. So, uh, from that perspective, on Facebook, it is interesting: is how much, you know, you know, do we have to give up of ourselves right. in order to continue to advertise and reach these mediums? But you see, the sacrifice comes back because Howard's found the same thing on Facebook that I found on Twitter, which is that if I reach out to a CEO of a company, somebody I should not be speaking to at all, on Twitter, they'll actually respond if if because it's that right. we're that early of adopters on it. So if if we We are oh, able no. to get level yeah. access to these oh, no. media. Why wouldn't? Oh, you're, you're yeah, waking up. Ryan, you on wireless? Oh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on company, company uh, Wi-Fi. But what I meant oh. to say was we are early adopters of this social media chatting and collaboration and even something like this. So if we have executive level access now to these people, because the CEOs have the most knowledge about their companies, their firms, and the mar marketplace. True. So if we See, can give that role to our teams... I'm sorry, am I still breaking up? A little oh, bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. I think it was sorry. because I was giving you so many props. <laughs> yeah. You're Probably. so profound. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the love. I'll take it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but but yeah, I definitely agree. I think that um if you if you jump on these mediums now, you're gonna get what you put out of it, you know, what you put into it, more than you can imagine, probably. Look at how we met, Ryan. Absolutely. Ryan, tell us what Linda, you do. Linda showed I, don't, me the ropes. I don't know you personally, and for other people that are listening in, what do you do? Yeah. Sure. What do you do? Tell us. Well, I wear one million hats at Jania, um, but but generally, I do. I focus on marketing and business development and operations. We're going to definitely be at CRE Tech Intersect and Recon. I think both of you are on it. Where Build Out is there, actually. Yes. Um, Build Out is giving away three prizes of one thousand dollars cash at recon so if what? you're at you recon, have come to our booth we have an awesome giveaway we're going to give you little buttons um with a unique number you put it on your lanyard and if you find your match with someone has the same number as you at recon you come to our booth you, you win a thousand dollars cash cash oh my gosh right Emma. Now, Eva, you, you might go ahead. You might be interested. I'm going to be there, and I'm working with Quantum Listing on that. Uh -huh. And you may be interested in uh, being a sponsor on the videos of my interviews from there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about it you for know. sure. I yeah. think that's awesome. Yeah. This show is brought to you by the Broker List, the CRE community's first free online platform for finding brokers, deals, services, and vendors. And Quantum Listing is the new mobile crowdsourced real estate listing app for commercial real estate agents, owners, and tenants. Okay. Okay. So what are we going to talk? Kind of uh, move this uh, up a little bit here. Linda, which one do you want to do? You want to talk about? I don't want to miss out on the tools because I think it's amazing. But I, I think just quickly. Um, we asked what social media tools are did you use in 2015? 32% said they use LinkedIn. Oh, no. I mean, to, to me, that just blew me away. 18% um, bad. 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 
bad. Yeah, and out of those 32%, what you don't know is how many people actually use it efficiently. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I we're mean, all at simply, fault there. <laughs> yeah, that's right, including myself. Right, but then it goes down, it drops to Facebook 18, Twitter 15, which makes me cry my eyes out because I love Twitter <laughs> so much. Uh, WordPress 8%, YouTube 8%, and whoever was talking about, uh, uh, Dennis, uh, Ryan talked about videos, 8% said so they use YouTube for marketing in, uh, uh, in 2015. And then it just drops like a rock down, down, down to Instagram for, yeah, yeah, it's just terrible. Like, but to me, the LinkedIn and, and it was so shocking to me. 32% because 71% said they care about relationships. Yeah. Their right. biggest stimulus for business is relationships and they're not utilizing the tools that are freely available to them. And 37% said maximizing exposure is their biggest challenge yet most of them are not using social media that social was the big media, thing that space yeah it's, it's sounds like my daughter is like what? oh i can't do this why not because i haven't tried it yet <laughs> how about they don't want to learn they don't want to learn uh it you know learning is a little painful yeah. it, it, and True. and i i have had to learn that not everybody is like me my life is trying to do things different from other people. So my appetite for learning is almost insatiable, which does affect my ability to focus on the things that I have to otherwise do. I go, yeah. oh, oh, I can learn this here. So there's got to be a good balance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I and most people, I was on a blab yesterday and we were talking about using blab and and the the sad thing was and we all agreed on it, is that this stuff is really easy but you know what 90 percent of the people out there are not going to use yeah. it yeah evo do you want to talk about your work day real quick yeah uh, last thing we'll go over so this will be a quick one but we wanted to see how they um how the brokers spend their time you know, kind of tying back into your tools and then your work day. So we asked how many of you have administrative support or marketing support since we kind of focused on both and staggering numbers said 57% said, yes, they do have administrative support. What's interesting is how many hours per week did you spend on admin tasks like updating CRM? deal tracking, client reports, billing. And like 80% said up um, up to 10 hours a week was spent on admin tasks. So not only do they have admins, but they're still spending so much time doing these, you know, data entry or these admin tasks. And same with, with uh, marketing tasks. How many hours per week did you spend on marketing tasks? So creating your materials, creating and updating property listings, social media, lead generation, things like that. Um, like 86% said up to 10 hours a week. So it was so much time is being wasted because they're not utilizing all the tools that are, you know, out there for them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you've done a great job and we are so, so fortunate that you allowed us to talk about Hi, our survey. Thank you How so about much, it, Howard. It was a wonderful venue and we got so much interaction out of it. Thank you right. to everyone that hopped on right. and commented. It was well, Thank awesome. you very much. Yeah. We're going to do the closing Thanks. credits and then I'm going to stop the recording and then we can say goodbye uh, shortly after that. Right. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. This show is brought to you by The Broker List, the CRE community's first free online platform for finding brokers, deals, services, and vendors. And Quantum Listing is the new mobile crowdsourced real estate listing app for commercial real estate agents, owners, and tenants.